I'm Sari Kimball. I'm the creator of Food Business Success, and I help packaged food producers start and grow their packaged food product into a profitable business, the most important part. All right, well, I'll just let you maybe just do a quick introduction. Who are you? Um, what do you make? Well, my name's Eric David. I am the owner of the Old Time Vinegar Company, and uh, I make craft vinegars from locally sourced, uh -huh, as modeled by the lovely Sarah Kimball. Uh, craft vinegars uh, made from locally sourced wine, ciders, and beers. And I also make uh, other products that um, are derived from those, uh, things that are based on those vinegars. That has yeah, been a dimension of the business that has just started. Yeah, Switchell's, exactly. Uh, Switchell's a sweet carbonated yeah. vinegar-based beverage. And um, that's the first product line that I've come out with that is not just a vinegar. Yeah, these are the original sodas, right? Theory. Yeah, yeah. Soda before soda became a thing. That one you're holding in your hand there, the cider mill, it uh, yeah. it's based on a traditional recipe, also known as haymaker punch. It's something that they would mix up and give to folks working in the field at hay harvest time because it's really refreshing. Yeah, there you go. And it's got some uh, some carbs in there and get everybody yeah. back to work. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Get you right back on your feet. So you and I, we go, we go way back, like back way. to my old farm days when I used to work on a farm and yeah. in the wholesale and the CSA. So yeah. yes. Oh, and we got switchels and shrubs are great. Somebody just commented. So that's oh, nice. Yes. Well, Sun Mountain Pharmacy, they are great. <laughs> they are. <laughs> so let's see. How long did you start this? Um, it's been, I really started working on it about four years ago. Okay. Um, I've been brewing vinegar for more than five years okay. and just kind of had it in the back of my mind for quite a while. But then I actually started the company about two and a half years ago. Yeah. So it's been yeah. kind of a pet project doing the vinegars. Yeah. Um, and then two and a half years ago. So... Yeah, and you, you used to work for a distribution company here in Colorado, mm -hmm. so you've kind of yeah. been around food, the food industry, yeah. so why on earth did you want to start? <laughs> you should know better. I'm a little thick skulled. It really, I don't, I, I still don't understand it. I saw, I saw all the warning signs, but still, here I am. And here you are, and you're still at yeah. it, which I love that yeah. about you. Uh, um, just, no, you know, having that insider information has really helped me avoid a few mistakes. Good. And it's also not helped me avoid some other mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's plenty of mistakes to be made, but if you can avoid some of the big ones. Yeah. And you got help from me, too. Yeah, um, sure did. So let's see. So you started with the 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 cider vinegar and the wine vinegar, so kind of the cookie mm -hmm. vinegar, salad dressing vinegars, and then you branched into the beer vinegars, which are super interesting. Right. Um, then you branched in. Some may say that you can't just focus on one thing, because then you went into switchels, and now yeah. you have some ideas for new products as well, right? Right. <laughs> I, some folks, one of those folks would be me. I have a hard time focusing, but it's, this is kind of part and parcel. I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to basically take up more visual space on the vinegar shelf. Um, so I am currently brewing a white wine vinegar and a rice wine vinegar, mm. and they're still made from local products. Um, yeah. Trying to source a good white wine for my, vinegar currently mm. um, shouldn't take too much longer, but it's proving a little more difficult than I thought. Um, but there is the Colorado Sake Company, oh. and they make a really delicious sake, and I am turning that into rice wine. I love that. Yeah. So, I mean, vinegars are fairly basic. So, like your bitter, beer vinegar, well, so the June apple, you get apples mm. from Colorado, same with right. the, the red wine vinegar, right? Yeah, the red wine, I get, you know, I, I source hard cider is what I do. I, 
I source hard cider from uh, local cideries. Mostly at this point, it's uh, Climb Hard Cider down in Loveland. Okay, cool. Um, and then uh, the red wines, currently mostly I'm sourcing my red wines from uh, uh, Ten Bears Winery up in Laporte. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But and I have those... got a few things from here and there. Too. And you put those in wood, right? Like an oak barrel. But oak then... barrel. And then you had four beer vinegars, so using all local local yeah. brewer, breweries. Um, I love that you did this gluten-free, so I learned that they're called Algars. That was something I learned yeah. from you, um, yeah. beer vinegar. So it's similar to like a malt vinegar, right? That's kind of right, right. Kind of exactly, yeah. Beer vinegars and malt vinegars are, as far as use goes, they're interchangeable, um, more or less. But uh, a beer vinegar is made from a finished beer instead of just the malts. So... Yeah. You can tell, you know, if you ever run across my beer vinegars in the grocery store, just by looking at them, they are all very different character. They're different yeah. colors. You know, there's ones that are made from IPAs, ones that are made from stouts, and you know, just this. You can make a beer vinegar on that is as diverse as any beer that you yeah. want. Oh, and I love, we don't, I don't think I have one anymore, but we made that little four pack for these. Uh, yeah. People love like little package yeah. things, right? Yeah. Um, and actually with the beer vinegars, I'm, I'm in the process, I'm going to be changing the packaging. Uh, mm -hmm. The feedback that I've gotten from a lot of different people on the beer vinegars, the original idea with the five ounce jar, the hot sauce bottle size jar, yeah. um, was that it, malt vinegar, beer vinegars is, is usually a condiment. Right. Um, but um, the feedback that I've got is people want to cook with it. Mm. So I'm going to be changing those into the 375 yeah, milliliter bigger, bottle, same, bigger, same size as the cider and the and the uh, red wine. And I'm uh, dropping from four varieties down to two. One. Yeah. Why? Why are you doing that? Why are you um. Kidding? There was, you know, I I felt like I was competing with myself. You know, people were choosing one over the other, and they would usually only want one. Yeah. And so I'm going with kind of the two most popular, I think. Yeah. And so which one are you, which gonna two are you keeping? just going to streamline my production. Uh, I'm going to be keeping the Coffee Blues okay. and uh, Liberty. They're the okay, two award winners. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's the gluten-free and yeah, and also Liberty will be changing. The, I get, I source my beer for the gluten-free beer vinegar Liberty from uh, Holla Daily Brewing in Golden. Yeah. And uh, I'm changing the specific beer that I use. Okay. I'm going with a, a stout, so it has the Riva stout it has a little bit more, Not you know, richer mouthfeel, a little yeah. bit more body. Yeah, and. Um, I'm also going to start brewing those in oak barrels as well because mm -hmm. I tried it and it really works. It's really good. Good. Yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> um, so what has your experience been? I know you initially launched at farmer's markets. I mean, it's kind of mm -hmm. good that you launched small like that so you could try this out and see which one. Right. Works. I mean, I definitely yeah, encourage I, people to do that. Yeah, that's, you know, where I started. I, uh, I, you know, developed the product and got it all set up. And then I um, started at the farmer's market and pretty concurrently with starting at the farmer's market, I, I got into um, Beaver's Market here in Fort Collins and the food co-op. they're both yeah. amazing places for local businesses. They'll, yeah. they'll take you at the drop of a hat and try and help you out. Yeah. Um, so go to Beaver's and the, the yeah, food co-op. Yeah, if co -op. you're in Fort Collins. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I, I was in a couple of stores and selling at the farmers markets, and I just I didn't really have a roadmap, so I was just kind of trying things out. There wasn't really a a business model out there that could be of much guidance, I guess, you know, because mm -hmm. you know I, I had no idea how well vinegar sold, how much it sold. I I had some pie in the sky projections, and then I had some weak projections, and uh, I, was, I was hoping for the pie in the sky. And yeah, vinegar's a pantry item. People buy it, and they put it on their shelf, and they use a little, you know, a couple of teaspoons here and there, and it's it's it doesn't move very fast. Right. And so all of those things, you know, all of those things that I learned along the way, I just kind of had to 
make adjustments for. And you're right, it was really good that I started so small. Yeah. Yeah, that is it is a tough product in that, it, you know, the switch holes are ones that you can, you know, it's the yeah. daily drinking thing. So I thought that was brilliant that you were re repurposing, you know, stuff you were already mm -hmm. making. And I know you're working on, you have two flavors now, and you said, are you working on a third flavor as well? Yeah, the third flavor is actually a shrub, which switch hole and shrub are kind of the same thing, but yeah. most people think of shrubs as being fruit-based, fruit juice-based. Yeah. And so this uh, this shrub is, uh, it's called the Blackest Crow Cherry Shrub, and it's made with the Coffee Blues Stout Beer Vinegar oh. and cherries and star anise and mm. a few other things, and it's... Oh, nice. Good. Yeah. 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 So the next step for that is just I've got to order the cans, and I'm just kind of waiting until I clear through some inventory of the two switchels, then yeah. I'm going to do a, a big can order and start canning them all three up. Right, right, and do some ch small changes to the labels and things. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah, you've worked with a cannery, which that's, that was also interesting, so a local mm -hmm. cannery, but I um, found one that they come to you, right? Uh, that's yes. That is who I used uh, for my first run. Um, that was um, oh, good grief! My brain is not working very well. <laughs> it's uh, Rody Canning Solutions. Okay. R H O A D E Y Rody Canning Solutions. Um, great guys. They came to my kitchen. They just had a few requirements, like a floor drain and a 220 plug, and yeah. and they even managed to fit it in in a spot that was probably just too tight for the for the thing. But, <laughs> Um, canned it up right there, and it was awesome. And since then, um, uh, my general source for hard cider, um, Peter, he owns Climb Hard Cider in Loveland and Big Beaver Brewing. Okay. Uh, he has a canning line. Yeah. And he offered to can it up for me, and it was, nice. yeah, okay. just kind of going yeah. down there ever since. Yeah. So, yeah, so you work a full-time job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are a busy guy. You also play banjo, although you probably haven't been playing much lately. I haven't but... played a note in like a month. I was, <laughs> I was just realizing the other day, I'm like, what is wrong with me? Since I started playing banjo, and maybe two days that I've gone without playing, and that's 23 or 4 years. Oh my gosh, you better get back to it. Yeah, I it's ridiculous. To... I used to hire Some, uh, you and your wife for, for yeah. shows at Whole Foods. And, yeah, and, and we're so both fun. screaming busy because she's not only working a full-time job, but she's also working on an advanced certification that's kind of like the work the work equivalent of a master's degree. Yeah, so, yeah. Hi, honey, bye, honey. <laughs> so how do you fit all this in? Because you're going, like, you were just at a store today, right? You were dropping products right. off? Yeah, I just had to drop one case off to Alfalfa's in Louisville. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just, just, I have a list yeah. of stuff that needs to get done. <laughs> <laughs> I plug away at the list and really the list keeps getting longer and the way most of the stuff gets done is it just becomes like, well, that's just not happening. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. I mean, you go on your own timeline and, and yeah. get it done as it gets done. Um, yeah. The good part about having a full-time job is with the pandemic, I luckily didn't get hit in my day job with that. And my overhead is fairly low. So I've been able to just kind of write it out and yeah. float the business for a while. You know, I, I can't do demos, which is kind of the way I get new customers. Um, and trying to get into new stores right now is not really happening all that well right so i've just been kind of using this time to work on my process and refine my product and get a few new products online so when everything gets oh it gets back to normal whatever, normal <laughs> whatever life, that looks like yeah uh, yeah then hopefully i'll be in a position where i can come at it strong yeah i think a lot of people are doing some r d kind of like going back to the yeah, mm -hmm. the foundations of the business, like you, you're paring down some product, you're adding some product, like what makes mm -hmm. the most sense. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Like I said, just trying to take up more of that shelf space. You know, I want to, yeah. I want to, I want to kick Fleischmann's off the vinegar shelf in your local store if I can. Um, and you have, you do have an e-commerce website, so 
Have you seen that increase during the pandemic at all, or kind of stay um, the same? Maybe right at the beginning there were a few more orders, mm -hmm. but once again, vinegar is not something that people generally go online to look for. Right. Um, there, are, there have been a few aficionados from around the country that have found me and ordered some and uh, been received well. So, um, but as far as just general orders, not so much. Yeah. And yeah. you vote, you have won some medals. So I thought, I think you do have to get creative with a product like yours because it's not yeah. a, an everyday consumable. Um, so you applied and won last year. Did you, apl you applied this year again? I have applied. I need to send off the uh, actual entries, but uh, the, the, it's the Central Coast Vinegar Competition yeah. in uh, uh, Paso Robles, California. Um, they have been um, postponed. Mm. So I'm yeah. just kind of dragging sense. my feet on, yeah. on sending entries. Well, I think it's but, so uh, smart to both. It's great on your website. Yeah. It's great social media. But then people who are vinegar aficionados, like go to yeah. their site and look up those products. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's uh, I noticed last year is as soon as I got those medals, I started getting emails and, and orders and yeah. just more notice from around the country. And, I love uh, that. Yeah, that, that sort of thing is is huge and i'm gonna probably do it every year until i don't know until i'm a household name I don't know. yeah well i think it's so smart any kind if you can find a some contest any contest in your category yeah. like Absolutely. give that a try why not you know it doesn't cost that much and you submit some samples and and we did yeah. that for the good food awards too right we submitted you for for that right. you didn't win, yeah and uh yeah I, I got a lot of recognition out of that too yeah, you know, was, that's true. In fact, I got a new customer out of that uh, St. Killian's Cheese Shop. He called me up. Like, oh. He saw my entry. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, people so, from all over the country look at that map and look at the brand yeah. on there. And so I think yeah. that's really smart. How important do you think you are to the business, like selling, being the salesperson? And, I mean, I feel like so much of you is in this product and in this, right. the brand. Right. I've really put myself into the product and brand and, you know, so I'm the only one working the business. So, yeah, so yeah, it's just you. I'm pretty important, I would say. <laughs> but uh, um, I, just before the pandemic hit, I actually had somebody hired who's going to be my brand ambassador. And, uh, yeah, and uh, we both just, as like as soon as the, about a week later we just said well it's probably not a good idea to <laughs> go to a grocery store and ask people to congregate around and yeah doesn't sound like a good idea so that was just bad timing <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was really bad timing it was about as bad as it could have gotten um but so i think what i'm trying to do currently as odd as it sounds is kind of bring myself out of the business make it a little less personal mm. Uh, because I'm one person, and yeah. as I've discovered over the course of my life, I'm kind of an odd duck, too. So the things that I like, maybe not everybody likes. So I am trying to appeal to a broader audience, I guess is what I'm, I'm saying. Yeah, there. no, that makes uh, sense. Yeah. You and hence, are... I'm trying to refine my product a little little just a little cleaner appearance gonna change bottles something a little more elegant and you know as you can mm -hmm. tell here elegance is probably not my, my strong suit so. well i love that you named all of your your vinegars after old banjo songs old time yeah <laughs> yeah, old -time a story and and song. yeah yeah um for the most part, there was the Wee Heavy beer vinegar, which was just too cool of a name to pass up. Yeah. You know? yeah. The Wee Heavy is what they used to call a beer that was taxed at 90 shilling or above in uh, 19th century Scotland. And yeah. uh, it's made from Odell Brewing's 90 shilling beer. So I just I couldn't did. pass that name up. Definitely. But everything else, you know, June Apple is the name of an old fiddle tune. It has some lyrics to it. So is Ida Red. Um, 
and uh, you know, roused about as a famous banjo tune. Yeah, I love it. That's something I don't see changing because I, I, it's something that n no other vinegar maker does is name their individual things. They just, yeah, it's a red wine vinegar. It's a white wine vinegar. It's a, um, it's a, what a malt vinegar, a, a Chardonnay vinegar, that sort of thing. Um, I wanted to have each one be its own unique thing, and by giving it a name like that. I feel like yeah it goes with like yeah. craft brewing culture as well i mm. mean you're you're in fort collins the napa of <laughs> microbrews i mean yeah giving yeah giving products kind of interesting names fun names it helps build connection and loyalty and right. people see themselves in it a little bit more and yeah of, people love a fun story and all of that yeah um, absolutely yeah so oh somebody asked if you are What's your, are you from Scotland? Do you have any Scotland lineage? No, um, no I, I really, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, my sister did a DNA test and that was like uh, uh, English and Spanish and something else. My yeah. mom always said we were like uh, Dutch and German. And, you know, she said that, swore that up and down all of our lives. And then my sister got this uh, DNA test and those virtually no Dutch or German in us. Oh. <laughs> <Thank God. laughs> so, so none of us are entirely certain. <laughs> yeah, totally. How did you find out about, somebody asked how you find out about the contest, um, the awards. Did, how did you, did you know about it? You know, I, had a I don't timer. remember. I think, I think I was just Googling a lot. Googling, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and <laughs> And uh, one of the things I Googled was, uh, I, now he's a good friend, um, I, Jay Rosto, who owns Virginia Vinegar Works. I just called him up uh, early on when I was, before he'd even really started the business and just asked him about it. And he was amazing. He's like, Eric, anything you want that I know you can know, just ask, you know. Oh, that's awesome. And awesome the whole time. And I, he may have told me about it, but yeah. I don't think so. I think I just stumbled across it. And um realized that he had entered and won a few things himself i think he won a um, double gold or maybe even a, a best in category yeah. for some of his years that's really smart to reach out especially kind of a unique category what that you're doing you know it's not just the basic household vinegar you're trying to do something special so finding other people doing it um so you're, i mean you're kind of in competition but like they've been around a lot longer i but, find people are pretty willing yeah, absolutely. I mean, Jay and I really aren't in competition, honestly, okay. because not only is he most of the way across the country in eastern Virginia, but he has a pretty different business model. I've come to realize I went out and visited him this last winter, and um, he really is mostly interested in selling to restaurants. He oh has bottles available online and I encourage everybody to get one because it's awesome stuff. Um, but for the most part, he's not, I mean, he, he really doesn't want to be involved in distribution and, yeah. uh, you know, he's in a few grocery stores, smaller ones, but he, he just, he has a bad taste in his mouth from dealing with all that. He'd right. rather just be, you know, there he, there are restaurants in D.C. or maybe it was Baltimore that have told him that his vinegar is just like key to their entire menu. Wow. <laughs> so, that's awesome. so, yeah, that's that's what he loves. And, have you uh, had much he, success with food food service with restaurants? I know that. Um, about. Not until recently. Um, okay. Recently, over the last year, um, the the lead chef up at uh, the Fort Collins Country Club actually expressed interest in he's been purchasing the apple cider and red wine vinegar and okay. uh, that's been good for him and uh, just recently um, Austin's American Grill down on Harney South Fort Collins they have become interested and they've got a, a few specials that they're making out of the red wine and they're really interested in the beer vinegar especially after the change once I get some bottled up in bulk for them there. Okay. They're interested in the beer vinegars and doing something. Yeah. Unique. I mean, our, our original idea, your original idea that I supported was the, the caddy with the four beer vinegars, like right. French fries, but, you know, hamburger. Like. And people just, 
I don't think people got it. It's an education yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. It's hard when you have a like, different kind of product. Yeah, I mean, there was there was a, a a fish and chips place on the south side of town. I'm like, I'm gonna start there. Yeah. And they closed. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, as, like as soon as I had the four packs ready and I was like gonna go in there, they closed. And I was oh, like, well, no. okay. <laughs> I'll go. I'll try the tap and handle, which is where we had our old time jam. Yeah. Um, I went there and they're great guys and they helped me out and they, they brought a few four packs on and they just, people just didn't know what to do they with didn't it. didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. I guess if we were in oh, England, it'd be different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think if, if we were in England, I probably wouldn't be able to keep up, but yeah. Um, what I, I, in hindsight, what I could have done was hosted an event, mm. um, like, maybe during great american beer fest or something like that had had you know done something on the side with their food menu something like that mm. but uh, there also has to be willingness from the restaurant and i'm not sure that they had the bandwidth to put into something like that so yeah. um yeah so what's learning. next for sure you've had a lot of you just you just keep getting up i love <laughs> <laughs> so next is Riding the storm out and uh, and trying to have everything ready when we come out the other side of it. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think um, the way it's looking right now, the, my stock of switchels and how they're slowly going down, I think that it should come out uh, about, you know, late fall, early, early winter. I'll need to re-up on those and, and can some more. And at that point, I'll order the new cans for the you know, for the um, Blackest Crow Cherry Shrub and yeah. be off and running with that. And I'm hoping about that time that the white wine and the rice wine vinegars are ready and can start thinking about the change to the beer vinegars and just right. just motoring along. And, and hopefully it'll all happen at the same time. And then once it happens, then, then I've got to get on some marketing because yeah. that's yeah. the thing I've just... I've let by the wayside, and that's probably why you know my my website, my web store, doesn't get a lot of traffic. Is you know I don't do a lot of marketing, um, yeah. just because I I wanted to focus while we're kind of in this situation on the refinement and sure. what I'm offering. I did have one uh, really cool article in the Coloradoan recently. Hmm. Uh, uh, Linda Hoffman, who was writing the uh, the food column for the Colorado, and she wrote an article about vinegars, specifically my vinegars, and oh, had some recipes. And yeah, got some interest. It was great. Yeah, you have such a niche product that I marketing is huge and education is mm -hmm. huge, and and I know it's always that push pull with small producers like yourself of like I already like I'm I'm bootstrapping this whole thing. You know, I mean, you have a kitchen with expenses, mm -hmm. um, obviously the product, you're making a lot of product at one time, the bottles, I mean, you have a lot wrapped up in this and, you know, marketing, we always go back and forth, like marketing can seem like this, like, I don't have, like, how am I going to find the, the money to do yeah. that piece of it? Um, I know we've had some success when we've done some giveaways, we did some giveaways to help grow your email list. And we used yeah. to do a monthly email and we paused those for a little while. And so it's just interesting. Like some people, I think during the pandemic, just depending on their product, they really went big, you know, because right. they were in the right category and they went crazy on their marketing. And it sounds like you've kind of done a little bit more of the, like, let's, let's kind of just refine and not hibernate, right. but like pull back and just like really be more thoughtful about your next. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to do. I, I've I've got a certain image that I'm striving for, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm hoping to come out on the backside of this with that image more solidified. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that part of you maybe pulling yourself a little bit out of not being not having the business be so. I usually tell people they need to get more involved in their business and be the face, yeah. but you are kind of. Yeah. 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 You know me well enough that you can say, yeah, uh, you don't need to be that involved in the business. Yeah, like <laughs> better like if it said, were a little less you, buddy. 
I think you're, um, some people, I mean, I, like, I love you. And some people are like a little like, that guy's a little odd. <laughs> I'm not sure what to make Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I am odd. <laughs> I think in the best way possible, but, um, oh. but I get it. Like sometimes it can be a little too extreme. So kind of you're, yeah. you're pulling back a little. It's probably, yeah. probably smart to be a, a little more. I usually say like most people are like, I want to be everything to all people. And you're more, I'm like, okay, let's bring it back. To, <laughs> just a little bit closer. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Open up your, your people, your target customers just a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There are like three people that to sell my vinegar too. They need to buy more. <laughs> <laughs> well, you certainly have a following when you were doing farmers markets, that's for sure. So yeah, and they yeah. they still come by. You know, I've been doing the farmers markets, and the same customers came by, and yeah. they know my name, and I know theirs, and I love that. You know, yeah. I just they they love my product, and I love making it for them. So well, great. Well, I'm excited to see these new products. I think a white wine vinegar is super super smart. Like it's. Yeah. used a lot in a lot of different lot more ways and used yeah. a lot more frequently so yeah i think the rice wine vinegar will also be a good uh way into more food service type things yeah that's true, that's true. been of, of the people that come to the farmers markets the chefs that i know they get they get wide-eyed really excited about the that's rice good. wine vinegar when i mention it so good uh, yeah, and I've tasted it actually for the first time last night. I had enough brewing that I could take a little bit out and just make sure it actually tasted like rice wine vinegar and not something else, I guess. Um, and it's it's good. How it's, long does something like that take to to for it's not is it fermenting? What is it doing yeah. in the it's yeah, it's, it's a okay. fermentation process. It's um, basically you introduce a bacterial culture to an alcoholic beverage. Okay. And the bacteria, Acetobacter as it's called, um, eats the alcohol and oxygen and turns it into acetic acid, Okay. which is the vinegar. But it also, along the way, it absorbs all these, the phenols and the character of the original beverage, and that all comes through in the final vinegar, too. Hmm. Um, and starting is actually the thing that takes the longest, just because... You want to start very small because you're going to start with a culture from some other vinegar. In this case, like the rice wine vinegar, I started with a culture from uh, um, apple, my apple cider vinegar. And so I started with a cup of each. And um, uh, Sun Mountain is uh, asking about a white balsamic. Yes, it is planned, um, <laughs> but it's not started. So I don't know when that's going to be. So. Um, yeah, actually, this is another thing that I'm introducing. I totally forgot to mention. I just, like, about oh, maybe a month ago, I think I figured out how to make balsamics. So I'm brewing a uh, red balsamic right now, and I'm going to do things like a apple cider balsamic, a beer balsamic, and just, yeah, should be able to do some pretty cool stuff. Um, and a white balsamic's on the list, but I haven't started that one yet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you like, start off. Your with, roll, I don't... <laughs> uh, I'm, I've already picked out the bottle. I'm I'm on my way, sister. Uh, um, but uh, so back to uh, how long it takes. The initial starting point. So you start with a cup, and then yeah, you, you know, you add a cup of let's say you know sake rice wine to yeah. that. Let it brew for a few weeks. Then you had two cups to that, let it brew for a few weeks. Then you had a quart to that. And so it's it's really it's this incremental process. And wow. once the more you get, the faster the end product will brew. And so, you know, at the end of it, if I have 15 gallons, I can take half of that out, put seven and a half gallons in. And depending upon what's brewing, it could be a couple of weeks or a month and I'll have 15 gallons finished again. Wow. So, yeah. I love it. And, and um, it. each one is different from the others, yeah. and they're all in their own ways. Yeah, so. that's so fascinating. It's hard to be super consistent with that, but I think that's part of the charm, too. Is yeah. That, well, yeah. but that, that also lends itself to a blending process. So, I, wow. you know, with, with the oak barrels, I have for every flavor, 
I have two barrels. One's a brewing barrel and the other is a mellowing barrel, mm. aging barrel. And uh, so when the brewing barrel is done, I take half of it out and put it into the mellowing barrel. And that just, you know, so, and there's 30 gallons in there. So, you know, it blends yeah. seven and a half or eight gallons in with 30 gallons and that mellows together for a while. And then I brew more in the brewing barrel. And so it's a, it's a batch wise process, but it's also a blending process. Yeah. Oh, it's so, uh, okay. so, so there's a lot of consistency there. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, I love your tagline, steeped in tradition. I think that kind of sums it up that you are doing this, like you're doing this pan process. But, I mean, it takes time and yeah. knowledge and yeah. Talent. A lot of trial and error. <laughs> A lot of trial and error. I mean, that's how I got into it. The whole thing is I accidentally made some vinegar one time. And, uh, <laughs> like, hmm. just went down a rabbit hole. Yeah. It wasn't even good vinegar. It was actually terrible. It was uh, <laughs> way, way over brewed and just barely anything there. And oh, I just wanted to know what I had done. Yeah. Figure it out. Figure. I love it. Yeah. Well, we wish you all the best. And I'm looking forward to your new products coming out. And we'll just stay, keep in touch. But yeah, everybody on, please go follow Old Time Vinegar Co. Old Time Vinegar Co. Yeah. That's the same, that's your website too, right? Uh, it's oldtimevinegar.com. Dot com. Okay. Yeah. Oldtimevinegar.com. Yeah. Awesome. No, no. All right. And then yeah. you can find some of his products in local stores in Fort Collins and Boulder, Longmont. Uh, Alfalfa's in Boulder and, Lu and Louisville. Um, Longmont, not anymore. The okay. Lucky Stores down in Longmont closed. That's right. That's um, right. But um, Niwak. Is right there and yeah. um, um, seeing free market in in Lions. So, yeah. All right. Good. Well, we got to get you down to Denver. Get you down these. this place. I, I was. I was at the Luckies down there and uh, yeah. it closed down too. So, yeah. yeah what I do. Well, oh, I'm well, St. Killian's well. Tea Shop. I am in St. Killian's Tea Shop. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I knew you said long enough. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time today. It was really nice catching up. Yeah, you bet. It's good to see you again. Yeah, you as well. All right. Have a great weekend. You and too. Go play some banjo. Go have a jam session. I, I really got it. I really got it. <laughs> It'll fill your soul. I know. It will. It All will. right. Thanks, Eric. Have See a great day. Bye-bye.